How big is the Clark Beckers matchup? It's huge. It's it's like I would literally call it a colossal matchup between these two. One, because of everything that they've been through, Paige with her injuries, Caitlin with almost winning a national championship last season. But you have to remember, these two were the topic of conversation their freshman year in terms of who's going to win national freshman of the year. Caitlin scored more points per game her freshman year, but Paige was more efficient her freshman year. Paige's team was a little bit better, and everybody was trying to decide who's the better player. Who would you rather have? Have on your team. That's still a topic of conversation. So these two having the opportunity, there's nothing but respect between them. We're not creating this rivalry. We're not saying they hate each other, but they are two of the best in the game right now that have been that way since their freshman year with an opportunity to go head to head. And the difference is they could guard each other. Iowa might go zone, but Caitlin might be guarded by Paige. And having that one-on-one -on -one matchup to watch them go at it and watch Paige try to slow down or limit Caitlin, which we've seen not very many people be able to do, it could be a truly special game to watch them go one-on-one. -on -one. We watched Paige defend Juju, that was special. Paige possibly defending Caitlin and then trying to operate on the offensive end like the smooth criminal that she's been all season long. It's gonna be, I could keep going. I'm gonna let the guys jump in, but this one's going to be amazing. You know, the game is always about the game within the game. It was so, it was much more than the Lakers, than the Celtics. It was bird magic. It was Russell Chamberlain. And anytime you see two greats, it was, it was, it was not only the, the Patriots versus the Colts, it was Tom Brady versus Peyton Manning. And this is what we have. We have two elite players. Yes, it's UConn versus Iowa. We always like, oh, it's my team, it's this team, that team. No, we want to see Caitlin Clark. And we want to see Paige Beckers. And we hope, hopefully, we get an opportunity to see these link up. That I'm guarding you, you guarding me. Because at some point in time, it's going to have to happen. We hope the game is close enough late in the ball game, Andrea and Steve, that, hey, you know what? Because that's what KD and LeBron did. That's what Bird and Magic did. That's what Jordan, who's the best player over there? Let me get it. That's what Kobe would do. So I want to see the game within the game. But, hey, it's two big-time players. Both have been player of the years. Paige Beckers was a, uh, uh, was a player of the year her freshman year. The last two years has been Caitlin Clark. Paige is coming off that gruesome knee injury, and she's just now rounding into shape. Can you imagine? If you see what she looks like now, wait till you see her next year. Ah, oh, but this is going to be the game. I want to see it. I'm going to watch it. But it's the game within the game for me. Paige Beckers, Caitlin Clark, UConn, Iowa. Somebody's moving on to the national championship game. There's more than one way to define and cement legacies, but it's still very few. But you still found yourself talking about bird and magic. Yeah. Why? Because in the sport of basketball, that individual confrontation means everything. And so when we look at Paige Beckett and we look at Caitlin Clark, as big as it is going to be for women's college basketball, as big as it's going to be for women's basketball, period, it's even bigger for Paige Beckett's than Caitlin. Because after last night's performance, like you said, Shannon, Caitlin checked all the boxes. I mean, you just look at that. You saw last year in the semifinals against South Carolina with the 41. You saw her last night with another 41 against LSU. You saw her knock off that giant, the reigning defending NCAA champions. Caitlin has checked the boxes. With Paige, we know what Paige could be and should be had it not been for her injuries. But now that she's back, to really put herself on the map, considering this isn't a typical UConn team. Yeah, you got to the Final Four, but even Andrea pointed out, they weren't supposed to be here, not with the plethora of injuries mm -hmm. that they've had, not with the nope. able bodies that they don't have available to them, not with the upward battle, uphill battle that they were going to have to fight. But Paige Becker's got them here. And so she's essentially doing for UConn what Caitlin Clark is doing for Iowa. And now that she's in this particular situation, now that she's recovered from her injury seemingly, and to go up against Caitlin Clark, again, because of what we know about Caitlin Clark and what she has cemented, it's Paige's turn to, do, to, to, to provide that cement to her legacy as well. Mm -hmm. And it's going to be real interesting to see how she responds to that challenge this Friday night. I suspect both of them are going to have big-time games. You know what this reminds me of, too? Like, I can't let this moment pass without giving some credit to the women that both of these players look up to. You know what this reminds me of? It reminds me of... 
this past season's WNBA Finals. Who, what was the game within the game in the WNBA Finals? It was Brianna Stewart and Asia Wilson. Wilson. That was the one-on-one -on -one matchup that everybody wanted to watch. They guarded each other. They went at each other. They both made tough buckets. You have Asia Wilson with her fadeaway and her elbows out, and you foul her every time she takes a shot. She took over in moments. And then what happened to the Aces? They had a depleted roster. I'm not saying Kelsey. that Connecticut's going to win the game, but the Aces had a depleted roster and still won that game. So you also saw masterful coaching. You're going to have to see that from both sides. Like this matchup, all of it's just flooding to me watching Asia and watching Brianna Stewart and also watching their teammates be great and their teammates have to step up in those moments. So this, that's the parallel that I'm drawing. It's immediate. It's right there. Both of these players have watched those two players. It's just, it's incredible what we're going to be able to watch again after witnessing greatness in the W. And Paige is trying to do something that every great UConn woman that came through that mm -hmm. program has done. Win a national championship. Yeah. All, they've all all the great ones have been player of the year, but if you, to, to solidify you to get by Tarasi and, and Maya Moore and Brianna Stewart and all and, and and all those Tina Charles, you got to get one. If it is if it's only one, like Luther used to say all the time, Stephen A. If only for one night, <laughs> if you could only get one, <laughs> Brianna got got four, Tarasi got three, but if you could only get one. That cements your legacy at UConn. And that's so much pressure. And that's so much pressure because think about it. You go to Stores, Connecticut. Mm -hmm. yes. uh, your women's basketball. You go to Stores, yeah. Connecticut. As great as you are as a player, think about the room that they have. Think about the greatness that, that, that has blessed that campus, that university. And you the lone one without a championship? Yeah. And I, that is not a good feeling. Yeah. That no. is not There's, a good feeling. They're reminded of it every day. It's you know, right you know, you know, no room. homecomings. Yeah. Those homecomings. <laughs> you the one person that ain't going to want to show up. Right, exactly. You the one person that ain't going to yeah. want to show up to homecoming. Yeah.